I'm not enough, but I can like understand like a pill habit. I'm scared of pills though because I don't know the dosage, and it's just like, all right, right. Who knows if I'm gonna wake up? They got faith. <laughs> I <laughs> they got a different, <laughs> like, got different type of faith. <laughs> but like, even like at the beginning of this, you were running. Like that was your that was your. And I need to. Quote, I definitely quote, need to get back to it. But also, was that just a substitution? That's the thing. That's the balance I'm trying to find. Like, I need to find an actual full life balance not because yeah, you were running your kneecaps off and i was scared for you and listen not just tiny things for a moment for me to be quote yeah. addicted to to get my mind off of something else i needed to be like this is my regimen here this is what i do here and i don't know if people really have that i don't know if people present it as oh i do these things i do these things and it works or if it's just seasons in which certain things work and i know they're also and i think that we we position you know fitness as a good vice so to speak but i think but it there is are other, but there are other vices that people delve into alcoholism you know stuff i'm not sure like put the, i don't know i just there are so many things alcoholism drugs you know just uh i think a lot of people are addicted to social media i think people are you know have extramarital relationships all of that stuff, like, it's just a coping mechanism for the things that are around you. And there's no knock on those things that help people get through. But it's just like, as human beings, are we ever going to be okay? And since we are speaking to the folks that we're speaking to from the space that we're speaking from, Black millennium, Millennials in Corporate America, and we're trying our best to work really, really hard to achieve our goals. But that mindset of, always having to work are our vices higher do our vices you know are our vices more detrimental to our life than our counterparts so i think it depends on what your vice is because mm -hmm. i don't necessarily think that everyone is replacing one thing with another so for me fitness is a vice that I li like I like to go to the gym. I enjoy fully going. To mm -hmm. I don't enjoy getting up in the morning, but when I get there, I'm like, this feels so like this feels so good. I, I it makes me feel great and it helps my sleep. I notice I don't even sleep as well when I don't go. I mm -hmm. think that there's a balance. Like when you were running, it was great, but a hundred a hundred miles is wild. Like that that's wild. It's a crazy feat, but I think too. There's a there's a balance. There's a zero to a hundred, and you literally hit the hundred. That's so, literally me, though. I don't know the in between. It's literally nothing. But or we've everything. We've talked about that. Like we some have. people's ceilings <laughs> are higher, and some people are ceilings are lower. It's just it's really a matter of what is content to you. I can't judge you and say you have a good vice versus my vice, or you know my vice is better than yours. But I think it's we can. Really I, like, I, mean, I know we said if you're no, not, sniffing coke and stuff yeah. yeah that's a bad vice but i'm saying if she was running 100 miles yeah i mean my knees wouldn't handle it i try to keep up with her and i was like right. nah, mm -hmm. came for me but if it was working yeah but i don't think it's the pressure behind it it's the things that come after the, the effects after the fact like okay i right. did 100 now i have to do better like why not just be content with your 100 you don't have to do 150 you don't have to read a bunch more than what everybody else is doing. But, it, but I don't care about everybody else. Like, everybody else ain't me. Obviously, I'm built different. Right. But your right. knees are your knees. You ain't supersonic. Like, you're not buying. I mean, when when my knees, my knees didn't have that much of an issue, I was just concerned. And then I dialed back. I just, some days I would do less. And then to make up for that angle. And it was literally only two months that I did 100 miles in a row. Yeah. But but also biology. Like, even even though your knees are not, we we all know that running is bad on your knees, period. Like it just is. So I think that it's a it's a great thing and you killed it. Right. But maybe maybe not a hundred. Like maybe you just maybe every once in a while you do thirty. Maybe sometimes you do fifty. Maybe sometimes you do blow it out of the water and do hundred and fifty. Again. I think that it's okay. Again, I'm leading this episode because I am okay with twice as good. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yo, I got an idea. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I, when I'm in a wheelchair, when I'm older, and I can't walk in a circle with y'all, we gonna make sure it's walking. electric. Like y'all right. walking with y'all. She gonna be because then she gonna sure. try to do some special Olympics type shit and then I do like 100 miles on her chair. Hey guys, <laughs> guess what? <laughs> hey guys, guess what? <laughs> right, like 
Manny signed me up for the Senior Olympics, and yeah. uh, <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> but no, I don't think that there's anything wrong with us having other places and other avenues to put our time. Um, especially if they are positive vices. No one can ever be like, oh, you work out too much. That, like, unless you're taking you know, people can. But people can say that. They can. There are, there like, are women who have no body fat. And it's like, what are you even doing? But that helps them mentally. But, I have, I have a woman, right. a, I have a woman in my circle. Her name is literally Karen. Her birthday is coming. Her 50th birthday. And we be like, sit down. <laughs> but she was like, it's more so for my mental health. I'm like, sure. But it might be. But if it, but if it is, as long as she and I never tell have, her not to. Yeah, if she doesn't have a disorder, and she's taking care of everything else, I don't know her well enough. Then, you know, I don't even be getting close to people like that. Then there's nothing anyone can say. <laughs> the only way I could say something would be if you were, if you had a vice that just it's not positive. So scrolling social media but positive, all the time is not positive, positive. No, positive is subjective, though. Drugs because, are not positive. No, I mean Al- alcohol is not positive. If someone manages their drug and their alcohol intake to the point where it doesn't look at y'all both shifting your head, but I'm saying, <laughs> but there are people. That, no, dead ass. There are people who are you both are probably close to who can manage this to the point where their family and friends and their work have no idea that that's something that they lean on. And it might not be a heavy lean. They're not out here itching and scratching and fucking shaking because they ain't had their fix. But it's still something that they need. And you might not understand it. You might not even know that it's a thing. But it's still something that they need. Like, nah. I mean, I get I'm, never going, I'm never going to say it's a positive yeah. vice. No, it's not a positive vice. But it's something that is people are able to manage. Yeah. That's a, yeah, yeah, I, I definitely know there's functional alcoholics, functional yes. drug addicts. However, yeah. that's what they're coping with it and dealing with it now. But where are the after effects of it? Right. That's the things like it's 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 like, OK, it's helping you in the now. But what happens 10, 20 years down the line? I mean, I don't have the, you know, like, I, 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 like, that's, that's like, I'm like, it's like, so there, that's why I say there can like there has to be bad advice where we know it's drugs and alcohol. That is, you know, a glass here and there, fine. But when you are consuming it to the point where it's like you are having cirrhosis of the liver and things, that is not okay. And you may be able to be functioning. You're walking down the street and you can handle the board meetings and everything, but you drop dead one day and we don't like, but he was great. And he did this, that, and a third. And he kind of find out, oh, his liver. Right, but you don't know. And that person thought that it was okay. That's the thing. Like one person's okay to another person isn't okay but lying to yourself. so like just just no it's not lying to yourself i'm literally thinking about like the guy that i mentioned earlier like i'm a hundred percent sure that that young fred boy who had a sex scandal and a coke addiction and a side baby and all that stuff, i'm a hundred percent sure a hundred percent sure that man is not functioning on all cylinders he's not a fucking uh a vegan and and uh you know right and not drinking anything no he is blazing the fuck up <laughs> to get through his deals and god be with him but that doesn't that works for him and i'm I'm never saying that it's okay for anyone else but that works for him and he is still able to excel so, so to pull it back to the context of this conversation again we have to be always cognizant of how much we indulge or overindulge or how we appear. Like, you know, for black people, if someone is a, a marijuana connoisseur, we look different than white people. Yep. <laughs> so you can't be blazing up the way Tad does because what's going to happen? Your lips going to be black. And niggas going to be like, What's different? What's going on? What's and going I'm gonna on? be, I'm gonna be judging you. So I just let, I want that to be known. You see, Shanice, Shanice is gonna be judging you. <laughs> it's just different. Mm-hmm. The standards are so, so different. So as we go on to the next millennia, the next generation, so Gen Z, our mentees and our children, what do you tell them? Do we, do we let go of this? work twice as hard to have half as much as they have trope or do we keep it pushing and just let our lineage burn out 
to try to reach our counterparts normal. Gen Z is just different, though. So I don't even know. No, like, no, 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 no. no. Y'all different. In, y'all ate Tide Pods. Y'all doing the lollipop cannons, passing. COVID's going around. Y'all licking lollipops and passing it to the person in the back. Y'all different. <sighs> Y'all ain't got a hundred percent there, but like y'all making moves also at the same time. So it's like, I, it's like, I, I hate to say, I don't know, but I really don't know. Like, I don't want to put that pressure on them because I know how that pressure feels and I would not want my daughter to feel that pressure. Mm -hmm. But then again, I know that if I didn't have that pressure placed upon me by my parents and also by myself, I would not be where I am today. So that's where I struggle with it. But at the end of the day, it's like, they don't do what they want to do. Because like I said, they different. I can't speak to them kids. And I work with them. Like, they just different. They going to do what they want to do. And that's the thing. Because you know how we, I did what I wanted to do. They, my, I was instilled to, to do things a certain way. And if, but when you got a certain age, though, those things that were told to you, you was like, ah, oh, shit. I was like, yeah, they, they was right, but I still, yeah, it. They made, I still adapted it to how I was dealing with things my way. I don't do things the way my mom would do them now, even though her values and stuff are instilled in me. Some things say, I'm like, yeah, you're probably going to say I told you so, but I still needed to experience it, and I still needed to do it my way. So that it's mine and I know how to move because the world is going to be different. I don't know what they're going to, their world's going to look like. I'm not, I'm not speaking about life and okay. I'm speaking specifically to career. To so career. I don't believe, I, I mm. personally don't believe in constantly burning both ends of the candle and I mm. never will do it myself. So that's not what I instill in my kids. And that's not what I would tell anyone else to do because you are going to get burnt out. And once you are burnt out, a lot of things can happen. Your health can suffer. Your attitude can suffer. And when those things happen, how do you come to work and give 100%? So at the end of the day, it's detrimental. It could be more detrimental to your success to continue to try to move in that way. I, I try to teach the kids balance, but I also try to teach them hard work. And I think that there's no other way to teach people hard work other than to show them. Because they don't see me work 24-7, and they're not going to because I am not going to. And they don't see me play all day. They don't see me just doing nothing, shooting the shit. You, I think it's important to know that there's balance. I don't, I don't believe in zero to a hundred. I, am more, but I'm also more fly by the seat of my pants. And it depends on how how I feel. I'm not a very, I'm not a type A personality. I'm not regimented in that way. So this like overload of work. When people say that they don't use all their time at the end of the year, I don't know those people. <laughs> I'm, I'm not living that life. It's Child. There's never going to be a time where I am not using all of my vacation time. That is not a thing. I'm using my time. If I can carry over 40, okay. But if there's 41, I'm taking off on whatever day I need to take because I'm taking all my time. So I kind of feel like I live a pretty balanced life maybe yeah okay maybe sometimes I can work harder or maybe sometimes I can put it down but I think that every day is not going to be balanced but all in all you gotta find your center of balance and that I think that's what we should be teaching Gen Z is to be great in whatever you do but this this mentality of you gotta wake up so you gotta wake up and go to bed thinking about the grind no I don't know. I'm not doing that. I, I can't. We might have to have... Jen, Jen, go ahead, and then I will speak. Did you speak already? I mean, I told you, yeah, I told you them kids ain't gonna listen. Um, <laughs> but I'm very... Okay. I mean, I'm very... Like she said, I'm, I'm like a mixture. Like, I'm type A with certain things, and then I'm really chill with other things. I just think whatever it is, I what I will say is the, the industry that I am in now was not what I planned to be. And when I first started off, I was very unhappy and I would be the type of person where it was like, I'm calling out just because I just don't feel like dealing with it and I'm unhappy. And then later on, and I was chasing money more so than chasing my happiness and doing something that I really love to do. So I guess that if y'all do listen, um, find something that makes you happy and you know, stick with it. Don't always chase the dollar, chase the fact of the knowledge and the experience and everything that you've gained from that. Um, and yeah, balance is definitely important because, like I said, I'm I'm a clock in and go back to sleep kind of person. 
<laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'll say we might have to have a part two of this. And <laughs>